Hey Eagles fans, I'm Thomas Mott. Welcome into the Eagles Report, and today we have some fresh Philadelphia Eagles news and rumors. A lot of injury news fresh off of that 23-17 overtime win. The comeback victory by our Eagles at Lincoln Financial Field. They look dead, and Carson Wentz and a bunch of tight ends and practice squad guys willed them to victory. They're alive in the playoff race and in the NFC. Before we start, though, give this video a thumbs up and show some, so show some love to Carson Wentz. If you thought Carson Wentz Balled out against the Giants on Monday Night Football. Give this video a thumbs up. Give him the credit where credit is due. Without further ado, let's jump right in to today's video. All right, first bit of news surrounding our right tackle, Lane Johnson, who was writhing in pain on the ground when he got rolled up on by one of his teammates. I thought for sure he had either broken something or he had torn something in his lower leg. It turns out, about as good as we could have hoped for, it's just a high ankle sprain. Now, I say just a high ankle sprain means he's still going to be out for a couple of weeks. Doug Peterson said he's week to week which means he's going to miss most likely the final three games of the regular season. They're going to try and have him ready to go for the start of the postseason if they were to get there. So that means Halapoviati Vitae is going to be filling in at right tackle. If he struggles, they could move Jason Peters to right tackle and slide the rookie Andre Dillard into left tackle. Remember, they tried to slide uh, Andre Dillard at right tackle a couple of games ago. It did not work at all. So Jason Peters is kind of your emergency right tackle right now. If Vitae is not able to perform, then you'd slide Andre Dillard over to the left side because that's his natural position at left tackle. So it's a, it's, a, it's a tough blow for the Eagles because Carson Wentz historically plays better when Lane Johnson is in there. He's one of the best right tackles in the NFL, but at least it's not a torn something or a popped Achilles or he broke his leg or something like that. He's week to week. He should be there if the Eagles are going to make the playoffs. And speaking of making the playoffs, will the Eagles make the postseason? Let me know in the comments section down below. If you think so? Tell me why. If not, which I understand because not a lot of weapons on this Eagles team right now. Let me know in the comments section down below as well. Speaking of one of those weapons, Alshon Jeffrey, it appears his season is over as he has suffered some sort of foot injury, which head coach Doug Peterson said will most likely keep him out for the remainder of the year and into the postseason. We don't know exactly what it is. Could be a broken bone somewhere in that foot. Does not appear to be an Achilles injury, but it possibly could because Alshon said he heard something pop while beginning to run his route later on in this football game. The Eagles are going to need to sign another wide receiver as they're very, very thin right now, whether they bring someone up for the practice squad or you go back out to the waiver wire and bring in a guy like Jordan Matthews, who you already cut just a couple of weeks ago. Either or, Alshon Jeffrey's season is basically over. Again, full, full details uh, are going to be out here in the next couple of days in terms of what exactly is wrong with, with his foot. But right now, it looks like he is done for the year. No more Alshon Jeffrey, who... Was not having a great year, but still was a lot better than any of the other wide receivers the Eagles had on their current roster. It looks like Nelson Aguilar is going to be your number one wide receiver if he plays on Sunday. Okay, quickly, subscribe to the, subscribe to the Eagles report. I'd greatly appreciate it. We're growing very, very quickly here. 100 and, or 1,328 subscribers last time I checked. Let's get that to 1,400 here quickly. Hit the red subscribe button. I'd greatly appreciate it. Okay, other injury news. Nelson Aguilar, he's expected to play on Sunday against Washington, although he's dealing with this knee injury where he played in the Miami game, 89% of his snaps then didn't practice at all this week and did not play against the uh, New York Giants. Now, they did not bring up another wide receiver. It's why they only dressed three because they thought he was going to play at game time. Turns out he was unable to. So again, he should practice this week. He should be good to go against the Redskins and he will be Carson Wentz's number one wide receiver. I guess you're not counting Zach Ertz on Sunday against the Washington Redskins as the Eagles continue to have essentially must-win games to uh, gear up before Week 16 and the Dallas Cowboys. Final bit of injury news here. Jason Mills, or J excuse me, Jalen Mills, who was injured later on in that football game in the second half, is day-to-day -day with an elbow injury. He should be fine, said head coach Doug Peterson. He's going to wear some sort of elbow wrap, but no worries for Jalen Mills. Miles Sanders briefly left the game uh, in the, uh, I think it was the first or, I think first or second half. Miles Sanders was not in there. That's why you saw a lot of Boston Scott, the uh, practice squad running back, filling in because Miles Sanders was cramping. So he's fine. They pumped him full of fluids. He got back out there, I think, for a couple of series. Overall, Sanders will be able to play on Sunday, which is huge. J.J. Arthega Whiteside had a hamstring injury. You saw him limp off the field late in that game. That's why Josh Perkins, number 81, the tight end, was filling in for him. It's not a serious hamstring injury, so he should be okay. And 
Jordan Howard, the running back, obviously our best running back, who's been out the past couple of weeks, is still day-to-day -day and could play on Sunday, but we're going to have to go ahead and wait and see. Overall, though, a big win for Philadelphia. I mean, I think a lot of us thought the Eagles were dead at halftime, 17-3. to I thought for sure Eli Manning was going to beat us, and yet he didn't because the Eagles' defense stiffened, and the Eagles' offense finally figured out that less is more. They got very, very simple with the Eagles offense. Doug Peterson dumbed it down a lot and found a lot of wide open receivers. The tight ends were getting involved. Goddard and Ertz and Boston Scott had a, like 139 yards from scrimmage and really gave the spark the Eagles needed in the second half. Carson Wentz was a leader. He performed very, very well under immense pressure. If they would have lost this football game, people would have been livid. And now you can go into a Washington game against Dwayne Haskins, which you should be able to win, and then gear up for Week 16 at Lincoln Financial Field against the Dallas Cowboys, which essentially will be the uh, the, the the playoff play-in game. Because if the Eagles, if the Eagles win against Washington on Sunday and Dallas loses to the Rams, then that means it is a play in a win a game and you are in scenario against the Dallas Cowboys, meaning you could potentially rest your players against the New York Giants in the final week of the season and give yourself a little de facto bye week before the wild card round where you'll play the fifth seed, which will be either Seattle or the 49ers most likely. There you go, though. All the time we have for today on the Eagles report here. Again, we're trying to grow as fast as possible. Give the video a thumbs up. Subscribe. We greatly, greatly appreciate that. And stay tuned for more great content all surrounding our Eagles a little bit later on this week. Again, for the Eagles report, I'm Thomas Mott signing off. Enjoy the rest of your day.